Okay, so we're going to uh, light this puppy now. Got my glasses, gloves, shirt, pants, shoes. Nothing's unsafe around, and I'm not going to light it here. So I'm going to stand a little bit over here. I'm going to point out this way, crack it open, and light. Okay, if that's a little high. You see that gap right there? That means it's a little too high, so we're going to turn it where the flame comes right out of the torch. Okay? Hear it. If it's, if it's uh, whispering real loud, it's too high. That's just still a little too high. About right there. See that black soot coming up? That's unburnt acetylene. The, the fuel's not being burnt completely. So if we add oxygen, which I did there, smoke goes away. We're utilizing all the fuel. It's burning all the fuel, and it's getting burnt. Okay, let's talk about oxygen. We've got this oxygen valve on all the way. Then we crack, and so we can just disregard using this valve until we're until we shut the whole thing down. Okay, so this comes our primary valve right here. Turn it off. It goes back to the pure acetylene, sooty deal. We add a little oxygen. There's two stages of flames that I want you to work with or learn. Okay, this is a neutral flame, right about right there. It's still uh, you got this blue flame here, and then you got this inner darker flame inside. We want to get that inside darker flame to be real sharp and defined and uh, bright. So I'm going to add more oxygen. And you see the little inside, the little inside flames, they're real dark, bright, sharp flames. Now if I add more oxygen, those flames will start dimming. And we want to stay away from that. So I'm going to back off. Perfect, right there. Now here's some things I want you to listen. I'm going to scoot in a little closer. That's, that's a good cutting flame right there. You listen, I'll be quiet in a minute, but if you listen, you won't be able to hear it too much. Okay? Now I'm gonna add more fuel and more oxygen. Hear how that's whipping out of there? That's too much fuel. Back everything down. I'm gonna back my oxygen down, then my fuel. And that's still just a wee bit too high. Perfect, right there. Let me adjust it. Okay, that right there in itself will melt metal. We're not going to make a cut with it, but it's hot enough to melt metal. Now, how do we cut? We have this little lever right here. We push that button, and it will literally start cutting through metal. Okay, so when you go to your metal, you put that on top of your metal. You never want the tip to touch the flame. You see these inner blue flames? You want those to just barely be right above the, the metal, never touching. Let it sit there, let it get cherry red. When it gets cherry red, push this lever, your oxygen lever, and that's gonna send out an extra burst of oxygen, which literally blows the molten metal through the metal all the way to the other side, therefore creating a cut. And here we go, I'm gonna hit it. Perfect. Now, when we, uh, when we first adjust it, I always like to come back and hit the button and readjust, and that's what I'll do now. Remember to be always looking for the inner flames, dark, dark blue, very sharp and defined. Okay? So now we have lit our torch. I'm going to hang this back here. You can turn your page to cutoff procedures. Alright? Number one, turn the oxygen valve on the torch all the way off. There's a reason why we, we turn it off in this fashion, in this form. You could, you could turn the acetylene off first and then the oxygen. And matter of fact, that's the way my dad taught me because he said if you turn acetylene off, it, the oxygen blows out the, tip, the end of the tip, keeping it clean. There's a reason why we don't do that and the reason why he was wrong. Sorry, Dad. But um, you turn it off um, and that oxygen can cause a buildup in here and the next time you light it, you can actually get an explosion. So always cut your oxygen off first. Remember just to snug it, not nothing gorilla type. Then you're acetylene, okay? Once that's done, then you come back over here, turn your valves off, valves, regulators, torch. So we're turning off the valves on the bottle, on the bottle, turn that all the way off. Consequently, this valve works two ways, all the way open or all the way closed. If it's, because it has such high pressure in it, it'll leak if it's in the in-between position. So all the way open, it allows those seals to seal off. All the way closed, once again, allows those seals to be uh, completely closed. In between, it will leak. So all the way off, all the way off. And now we're going to bleed 
the lines. Okay, we'll bleed our fuel. And as we're uh, bleeding this fuel, I'm going to open this valve and crack it open. And I want you all to watch this gauge. Watch how these, these needles drop. Okay, as I'm bleeding this, I'm making sure that it's, um, it's not on anybody. Does that, you up on it good and close? There we go. And bleeding now. And you want it to turn all the way to zero, just like that. Okay, once, you, uh, once you've snugged it closed, I mean, once you got it to zero, you snug that valve on the torch closed, and then you back the regulator counterclockwise, two and a half times. There's half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half. Okay, now we're going to bleed the oxygen. As I said before, oxygen is... Uh, it's not flammable, but it will make something burn way hot. A lot of times guys want to, uh, it'll be hot, 100 degrees, you're wearing all these clothes, they want to get cooled off. This oxygen would really, you could take it and push this button and cool yourself off. But what you just did is you made yourself extremely flammable, okay? Because oxygen makes you burn faster. I've seen people have shirts on and do that. And a little spark comes and hits them, and then boom, they just flame up, big giant ball of flame. So never spray this on yourself. So we're gonna we're gonna make sure that we have it pointed away from me or anything else. And I'm gonna I, all I gotta do is hit this button, and then the gauges are gonna go down. Make sure they're all to zero, and there they are. So now I'm going to um, back off this two and a half turns. There's half. One, one and a half, two, two and a half. You don't want to back this out all the way. Neither one of these pressure um, gauges, the, the T, T valve there, you don't want it, the T handle, you don't want to take it out of the way. Two and a half turns. Do not do three because this will fall out. You won't be prepared or fall on the ground. You'll get a grain of junk, trash, sand, whatever. Then you're going to go to put it back on. It's going to get in here. And remember, this is this is in, all inside that rubber regulator, um, rubber diaphragm, I mean, and 2,400 pounds of pressure. So trust me. Okay, so we've got those backed off. And I kind of stepped away here. Let's see, number two, turning saline valve and torch off all the way. We did that. Turn both bottles off all the way. Did that. Bleed both lines completely by opening the valves on the torch. Continue to keep open until both gauges register to zero. Did that. Back regular handles at least two turns. And I, 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 two and a half is what I want. Loosen the handles too much, they will come out. We talked about that. Wind up hose. Always wind up your hose. Uh, replace any tools to their proper place. No. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Regulator hoses are threaded backwards in the, on the excelling bottle. Okay, so that pretty much concludes everything. Um, if you have any questions, always, always ask. Uh, when in doubt, don't do it. Uh, be alert and attentive in the shop at all times. Do not take anything for granted. Uh, there are things that, that are out here that will hurt you. Um, and it's my job to ensure that that happens, that you do not get hurt. Um, oh, and turn this bottom valve off when you're completely through. What I'll do. Well, let's talk about that. Why do we want to turn that bottom valve off? Well, because this is a cutting tip. There are other things you can do with this. There's a, an attachment that we call a rosebud. We use it to heat metal, to bend metal, to shape it, to get it real hot. Um, let's say you want to do some brazing. You can put a brazing tip on it. As I mentioned before, this nut right here is uh, hand tight. Brass is a very precise metal. That's why some of this stuff can be hand tight and it not leak. Uh, like plumbers when they're working on your house or buildings or whatnot when they do their plumbing they put all kinds of uh, Teflon tape or plumbers dope and all this kind of stuff that's because it's metal this is brass they use iron or cast iron or that kind of deal. this is brass and so it you get it hand tied it won't leak so I take that head off and I always put it back in the tray and for example this is a a rosebud tip Okay, and I'm just going to put it on there, line it up, you can strip this out so you do need to be careful, line it up, 
thread it on there, get it almost tight, get it, spin it to the position you want, then finish with a good hand tight snug. And we're ready. So when you go to light this puppy, you crank this up. How many turns? Quarter to a half, that's right. I'm anticipating you said that. Light it, then add your oxygen, not a whole lot. Then add a little more fuel, then add a little more oxygen.